sitting here and I see you looking at me. And how do others know you're here? How does Beth know that my voice is working? How does Spiff know that I'm comfortable in my approach to how I'm going to do this tonight? Well, that's a question that we all have in virtual worlds. As you guys know, virtual reality is technology that convinces people that they're actually some other place by substituting your primary sensory input with data received by a computer. And in fact, when the virtual world becomes a workspace and the user identifies with their virtual body and our place is gonna turn into a workspace real soon here, then you get a kind of a sense of feeling of community. Well, let's not sit here anymore. Let's do one of the very first things that turn this place into a workspace. Let's look at something called spatial presence. Can you stand up? That's the first thing that I would like you to do. I would like you to stand up. And look how some people immediately responded. And they stood up while others kept sitting down. Let's go stand over by the people that are sitting down. And let's see if we can get them to stand up just simply by being spatial around them. Do you think they'll cave in and become part of our standing group? You don't know, they're still going to sit. Let's move away from them for a second. Let's move into different groups. I'm going to stand over here in the corner. Brand, they might not be able to hear us. Okay. I can work with that. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to separate the men from the women. I'd like the men to stand on my left and the women to stand on my right. When that begins to happen, you begin to understand that this is a Cartesian plane and that we really do have this sense of space within the environment. Let's see how many women we have and how many men we have. And I'm gonna take this thing off my head because now you know who I am. Wait, and I don't need to, to do, do anything we, specific. What we... Well, what I'd like you to do is get up and all the women walk on one side and all the men walk on the other side. Uh, so women to your right and men to your left. Thank you. That's Betty. right. So we're beginning to experience a sense of spatial presence just simply by being in the spatial environment and utilizing it to get activities done. Here's an interesting exercise. I'm walking away from you and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to see if any of you have naturally followed me. And I see that nobody has naturally followed me. Come this way. The social conventions for spatial presence require you to stay alert with the person that is presenting and you follow them around. Let's see if you maintain my rule. I ask for men to be on my left and women to be on my right. And let's see if we can get everybody to do that. There's something about spatial presence that requires you to be aware of your environment at all times. Let's walk back over to the people that we were just looking at. And let's see if we can engage them without words. Let's see if we can get these people to stand up still by using other gestures within the environment. So does anybody have any great ideas about how to get these people to stand up without using our words? What can we do in the space to allow them to do it? I see someone jumping. I see lots of people jumping. So you're using the 3D space to get people to engage in the environment. And we're still not getting them focused. So one of the things that you can assume by using spatial presence in the environment is that people will follow you technically when they can hear you. And when they're not following you, there's something askew. So you don't even need words or the, the same language 
to get people to interact with you in the environment. Let me ask you another question in the spatial environment because one of the things that determines whether people can relate to spatial environments or not is something called vividness. If the environment is very vivid, then you will be attracted to move around in it. Try this. Walk to what you consider the most vivid spot in this room and see what you do. You're experiencing spatial presence and you're making your choices by your own volition and you're all looking for vivid spaces within the environment. Now while we're waiting for people to react in the vivid space, one of the other spatial parts of presence is chat. And I'm very curious, I know that I teach my students to do this, can anybody give me a definition of vividness in chat while you're all standing around? And let me start asking a few questions. Cleopatra, why did you stand there to show your choice for it being a vivid spot. Can you answer that question? Cleopatra. So 8-bit, hi 8-bit, says vivid from the root vita for life. So Cleopatra, can you hear me and can you tell me why you chose that as your vivid spot? What I find interesting about virtual worlds is the level of interactivity that happens in them. I is, like the is, color of the rug. You like the color of the rug. Can you go stand away from the rug and go stand on the squares? Okay. And I ask you a question when you're standing over there. Do you feel more engaged or less engaged with the rest of the group when you're standing over there? Well, I feel more engaged with the people I'm near and less with the people over there, I suppose. And are you aware that there's somebody behind you running around in the garden? Nope. No, I don't see anyone. Nope. Let's all go stand over there and ask that person why they consider that their most vivid spot. Sonny, can you tell us why you moved over here? Can you say it out loud with your voice or can you only chat? I'd like to hear your voice. And you only have chat at the moment. So, very clearly, you have it that we all basically have a sense of spatiality. Another component of spatial presence is the concept of interactivity. If I walk down a path, I'm pretty confident that people now are going to start walking with me and following me wherever I go. And of course, the only way I know that, and look how I'm changing your behaviors already, I've got the majority of you now working with me and doing what I expect to have happen and I'm using your bodies in order to make sure I know that you're paying attention to me. So instead of talking to you about spatial experience or spatial presence, we're experiencing it. Now this guy right here with the white um, shirt and the black gloves, I want 8-bit to start walking somewhere and I want to watch everybody's behavior when they when 8-bit goes to walk somewhere. I see some of you turned your bodies because you're wondering where 8-bit has gone. I see not a lot of you moving over to 8-bit because the spatial presence that I occupy is the dominant spatial presence because I have been identified as the leader. If I start moving towards 8-bit, I almost guarantee that the rest of you will be following. And sure enough, through the weeds, <laughs> good choice, 8-bit, it's like you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> we have found 8-bit, and the people who are 
following closely to 8-bit are following closely perhaps to the dialogue that's going on. Their bodies indicating their level of attention in the environment. Now I want you to look for something interactive. Now this is a group activity and what I'm interested in here is I want you to find, without going very far away, something within this environment that's interactive and see if you can get everybody over there to see what is interactive. On your mark, get set, go. You have 60 seconds to find something interactive. As soon as you find something interactive, identify yourself. It's the only way we're going to know that you found something interactive. I found something interactive. And that was Beth. And because yeah, I'm using yeah. the chat, I noticed Beth's voice went on, so I'm using the spatial presence of Beth's avatar in the list to see that she's speaking. Beth, how do we get to where you are? There's a big sign right outside of the ISTE Pavilion. Um, it says on it, Walt City of Jerusalem Tour. Tell me when uh, people have uh, found it and are standing by you, that okay. you think that you're confident it, that people have identified what space you're talking about and they have successfully arrived there. But we have hot pie. Okay, there are a couple people here. Now notice how some people held back and they're watching the, the, flow, the flock of birds phenomena. They're watching people suddenly move in the right direction. And then they move in the right direction. Now that they're no longer curious about where that place is, they're using spatial presence of other individuals to find it. When do you think that you have the majority of the group there, Beth? Beth? I don't know how many people are in this group. This is a really good crowd. Let me look at the so what, map here. Yes, yeah, so what's interesting is how do you manage attention in the environment by using spatial presence? How do you do it? And Beth is going to use a tool. She's going to use the um, map tool. Let's see what technique she's going to use to get the majority of the people over here. Is oh, Beth a... Agile Bill, that's a good idea. He put the coordinates in chat. Excellent. So, using other people within your spatial environment to expand your knowledge of getting people to focus on what you're trying to achieve is a technique. Tell me when you Mag have the people. Maggie and Cleo, come on over. There you go. Now she's calling out and she is enticing people to come near her because she's identified who they are. She's using space to manage attention and get people to co-locate in the same space as her. This is not an easy task. If you've ever taken anyone on tour, you know what I mean. This is very difficult. But understanding how to use space virtually is the objective. Do you feel like you have the majority of people here now? Yes, I do. Good, so what I'm going to do is I believe in uh, rewards and recognition when people perform properly. So I'm going to pay, you'll hear the click in the background, I'm going to pay Beth 500 Linden for that excellent job of getting people to come over here by using her various skills and techniques. Awesome, thank you, Ran. <laughs> You're welcome. And now what I've I love done shopping. Is I... <laughs> Now I've thrown in a stimulus of an extrinsic motivation to start charging you to do what I would like you to do. Let's do something called self-presence. Um, self-presence is knowing that the person that is here is you. 
and I am going to go take you somewhere over, I might have to open the island, so let me get over there first. Um, but here's where we're headed. We're going to go over to the University of Washington's island, and I've got some stuff planned over there for you. Now I'm checking the land to make sure that it's open, and it is now open. Now, still keeping spatial presence in mind, when you start to appear on this island, what is the first thing that you want to do to recognize your, to, to demonstrate that you have an understanding of how to uh, manage the space in a polite way within the virtual environment? What's the first thing you do when you teleport from one location to another? Agile Bill says you move. I spin around. You spin around, but what what that's good. So that's what you personally do. And what Bill uh, is suggesting is that he's aware of the other people around him, and so he moves out of the way. Does anybody see anything within the immediate space that would allow me to assume uh, full authority in this new space? Where would I move my body to assume full um, authority? You're suggesting high ground. And Bill, look how Bill is actually using his body to demonstrate what I, what I should be doing. Wait, are you guys in, um, on your land or are you still at SD? I have uh, set a new place for people to come. So I've changed locations. And the reason okay, that I have, get there? Uh, I have pasted the uh, URL in group chat. Okay. I'm going to stay here for a minute and get Teacher Girl Razor on board. Okay, but great. I have that. Thank you. So, here, this is a technique to manage people's attention by using um, space. Is you switch locations quickly, you move around quickly so that you can determine what people's state of mind is and whether they're um, engaged or not and whether they're interactive or not. So welcome to the University of Washington Island and you might notice that I have various um, activities that are located um, around the space. And speaking of color and vividness, um, and because color means something to people ar around the world, um, what do you think is meant by the different colors of squares surrounding the activities on the ground? What would be your <laughs> guess would be the reason for the colors? Remember how I give Lyndon <laughs> for the right answer. So uh, teams is a possibility. Vote so I could and don't vote. Oh. say again. Are the green I heard ones somebody. Ones we're supposed what? to go to. So I'm getting that you have an awareness that That's color has answer. meaning within the environment. Uh, and, and you know that it's used for cognitive purposes like Free We pointed out, the um, consolidation of teams into groups, okay? So um, I can do something very simple. Um, if you are um, from Washington State area, go stand in any of the green squares. And if you're not in Washington State, stand in the red squares. So I can use it to sort people. Okay. And again, if somebody's not moving into the space, you want to approach and find out why and engage them personally by calling out their name and saying, 8-bit, can you please um, put yourself in one of the squares? Because as soon as you start um, achieving conformity within the environment, you'll get more people achieving conformity. Now, 8-bit more likely can't hear me, which is why he stopped all of a sudden. And I understand that, but instead of us sitting around talking about technical difficulties, I can set somebody on 8-bit to see if I can get them to go solve this problem, okay? Now, I can also use the numbers if I want to. 
if you have more than one, go go to the number that represents the number of siblings that you have. So go to the number that represents the number of siblings that you have. So again, using another technique of something so simple and so plain is using a white colored um, block to indicate a, um, a sorting mechanism, and in this case, the number of brothers or sisters that you have. And then if you have no brothers and sisters, let me see if that's the case of this person here. Nova, do you have no brothers and sisters? No, you don't have enough blocks here. Ah, so you need a number that's bigger. So what I would do if I were you is get up on the stage to assert your authority, because now you have a question. So another one of the things to manage in this space is questioning and answering management. So Nova, why don't you go get up on the stage to indicate that you do not fit within the sorting? Bill, what about you? Bill, then you must have to get up on the stage as well so that we can sort out why you are not complying with the rest of the group. There must be a reason for it. And of course you say you're on neutral ground. But what I would do now is I would categorize you of being not in the groups and put you up on the stage suggesting that you need special attention, which is you need to have some kind of way of finding out how to get where you belong. So not only can you use these kinds of environments and spatial um, presence to sort people, but you can use them to manage questioning and answering as well. Yeah, so I looked for grass because grass was kind of neutral, but I like the stage even better for zero siblings. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I'm going to move now from talking about spatial presence because I think that you really understand it because I've given so many examples of it. And I'm going to move you to self-presence. This is kind of an interesting exercise. If you'll fly up with me and come over to the other island, I might have to set it open for you. But I want you to come into our stage area. Let me open it up because I'm sure it's telling you you can't get in. Oh, you can get in. So I'd like you to find me and um, stand outside of the stage area and let's see what kind of decisions we have to make outside of this black box. Because what we're going to do inside of this black box, we're going to look at a little bit of who you are and who yourself is and do you identify with your avatar and do people see that your avatar is the same as you think that, let me say that differently, do people perceive you as you think you perceive yourself. So, I'm going to uh, drop a URL, a slurl, in chat just to help people because I've done this before. So if you haven't been able to find me, please come over to this URL at 180 179 And before you even walk into the stage, and I'm gonna ask this question out loud, um, this is a fashion show stage, and it gives you two options to enter into the fashion show area. How clear is it to you what those two choices are? Can anyone answer that question? So it's even better than left or right, isn't it, Helena? It's either you're backstage because you're going to be on the stage or you're going to be in the audience. What I'd like you to do is either get in the audience now or get backstage because I want you to um, be part of a fashion show. And the reason I want you to be part of a fashion show, and I want you to do it um, the way fashion shows work, wait till the host gets up there to start pushing you down the stage. And I want you to prepare three adjectives that describe what you think you are portraying as an avatar. Please don't start going down the runway until I put the music on. But get into position now, either get um, behind the stage. I see somebody who's gotten on the catwalk already, so let me take the time to control the situation. 
and please um, either get backstage or get on, in the chairs, or you can even get in the judging chairs if you like. And here's what I'd like you to prepare. I'd like you to prepare three adjectives. One of them is what I call psychological or behavioral. What do you think your avatar portrays in terms of behavior? I think mine portrays confidence because I'm in the authoritative position. So the first one is behavioral. The second uh, adjective I'd like you to use to describe your avatar when you start walking is um, biological. What is it about the physicality of your avatar that you think that you're portraying when you walk on stage. I am pretty much going to say I'm humanoid and I, I'm male humanoid. And then the last one is behavioral. What is the term that describes you um, in terms of what your attitude is right now? And mine's very upbeat. So if you're now behind the stage, I'm going to ask you to go out one at a time, but I'm going to put some music on to walk to because it's always better. It's more uh, effective. So I'd like the first avatar to walk out on stage and walk the circle and throw in the three adjectives that describe you. What are the three adjectives that describe you, Bill? Uh, mechanical, uh, robotic, and neutral. Okay, so behavioral, physical, and um, attitudinal. So let me make sure that's clear. So one, behavior. Thank you, Beth. Two, physical or biological. And three, but yeah, behavioral, I have to get this in my head, behavioral um, and attitudinal. That's it, your attitude. Okay, great. I'm with you, Beth. Yeah, logical, et cetera. Thank you. All right, next person, come on down and walk down. This is going to get uh, even more different than this. So there goes the next person. And I'm looking for that person's three adjectives that describe themselves. Leslie, can you put in three adjectives that describe who you are? And keep walking. You want to stay active. So one of the things that's happening here is... People are looking at you, and people, you are the center of attention right now, and you have to decide whether you are going to exhibit your personality. Come on back now, now that you're at the end of the stage. Walk out and walk back. And she's put cute, dino, and tiny. So make sure that those words are attitudinal, behavioral, and physical. Okay, next avatar, go ahead and walk the runway and three, we'll throw down the three adjectives that describe you. Behavioral, physical, and attitudinal. Your behavior is pretty much your cognitive state. Okay, don't forget to walk. You want to walk the whole time. You want to be active. I'll demonstrate. You walk down the side. I did there my we little go. poses. All right, and then you come on down and you keep walking. I stopped to do the modeling poses. Okay. Now, um, is there more? Are there more? Here comes another avatar. Next avatar. Okay, come on down. Don't count as much. I see um, Tiffany. Come on down, Tiffany. Now, a lot of I what I'm demonstrating to you is um, there. We go. Here comes Tiffany. And what's interesting here is that you have to follow directions. You have to adapt to the new space. You have to be brave to come up here in the first place. And it requires you to have a sense of self. How much do you want to disclose about yourself? How competent do you want to show people that you are within the environment? All of these things are definitions of your identity and yourself. And she sees herself moody, human, and cool. Okay, next avatar, come on down, Helena, and you'll be the last avatar I want to use for this exercise. So here comes Helena. 
And Helena, give us those three adjectives. I never really got to give mine. Okay, come on back. Now I'm going to reduce, I'm going to change this a little bit because uh, I spoke of um, the attitudes that you have and looking at your selection of deciding whether you're going to go out and expose yourself and put yourself out in the center of attention. And some of you have done that and you've gotten some feedback. So feedback is a really strong attribute of determining self-presence. Now we're going to step it up one, and the adjectives that are going to come to describe your avatar are going to come from the audience this time. So I'm going to have the um, same people walk through, and as each one goes down, I want um, the audience to describe them. And this is going to be an exercise in looking at what you think about yourself versus what others think about you, or the way others are perceiving you. That's me. Joe I'm okay, not I don't want a commercial. Like I need music. Okay, great. Now, in, in, in world, you describe this avatar. This takes a little um, bravery because you're talking about somebody you don't know, but it's okay. And I want to point out something after you do this. So walk the runway, and then other people say what you think of this avatar the term, about their the behavior, the their attitude, and their physical description of them. And this is very good feedback to that person to get them an idea of how their self is being perceived in the environment. Okay. <laughs> okay, Bill, come on back. And now I'm going to ask uh, Rhiannon to go down. So Rhiannon, you go down the runway now, please. You're on my left. And you guys describe this avatar. And you're talking about the avatar, not the person. You don't know the person. But this is an exercise in perception, how that person perceives Casual. themselves. And how Casual you perceive Casual, poised. And do they match? Okay, great. Um, Helena, take your turn, please, and walk down. Now, in um, the book called Virtual You, The Dangerous Powers the of the E-personality, e personality, there are some negative consequences of the E-personality. Please continue to put in adjectives so that person can see the feedback that you're providing to them. Next. And look at, um, is, is this what you think that you're portraying? Can I have the next person go down? And I'm going to start writing some words that come out of the book called Virtually You, The Dangerous Powers of the E-Personality. And I'm going to write them to remind you of some of the negative consequences of self-perception in the environment, the things that happen here. So check this out. This is not to describe the avatar. Delusions of grandeur. Narcissism. Ordinary, everyday viciousness. Impulsivity. The illusion of knowledge. Addiction. And the end of privacy. These are some of the negative consequences of the E personality. Hey, for a reward, let everybody get up on the stage now and let's do a walkthrough on the stage. I'm going to put on a little bit more powerful music and just for a reward, we'll all walk the uh, rock walkway. And look at the different types of personalities. 
Are these? <laughs> that is awesome. Whoever did that with the paparazzi. <laughs> I have got to get that. Um, okay, great. Keep walking. And just to get a sense of, do you own the stage? I'll just do this for 15 more seconds. One of the um, things that I do, and when my music stops, okay, my music is now stopped. So one of the things I do when I choose TAs to work with me or when I um, employ people to work with me in the virtual world is I determine um, their effectiveness by how well they know where I am in the environment. So are they more indulged by their own experience or are they more involved in a social experience? So as I come back to that purple stage and I get up on the stage and turn around, I'll be curious to see who's in my space and who was ready to get to the next point. And I see I'm in a ghost town. <laughs> I see Bill there. And I see, uh, and of course, to facilitate this, and of course, all, everything that I do here is basically a lesson. So if you, you are me? focused, I see two people right now only. It seems like you have trouble acknowledging teenies. <laughs> I'm looking from up ahead now, so now I have corrected my behavior. So um, social presence is the next concept that I really want to talk about, which is do other people know that you're here? I've been talking now for over 40 minutes. I've moved from one location to another. Somebody's making some noise, so let me see if I can kick them out of the group. Nope, don't have that power. And um, social presence is um, recognized by people's ability to recognize what you're doing in the environment and either participating with you or collaborating with you. You can choose not to do that, of course, but the whole point um, in these environments is that you ultimately slowly but surely build up competence through community where people know what's to be expected. When I go over to Edu Island and I go over to the VWER space, I sit down and I wait for the speaker because that's the acceptable sociable, social behavior here. Now watch this, we're gonna do an exercise over here at number two and watch the social behaviors of people as we come over here. Now please wait until I ask you to participate in this exercise. Please come over here to number two. And the reason that it's green is because it's easy to do. So um, may I have a volunteer um, walk only one volunteer as soon as there's one person there there's no more volunteers one person get on the other side of the green square so that they can participate in this activity and notice the social behaviors while we're doing this no one's moving their avatar to indicate that they're a positive or negative about doing it but I certainly could have trained that behavior could have asked you to stand close if you are engaged or I could ask you to stand away if you're not engaged. Okay, can you Wait come back Leslie now? Leslie was the first one there and nobody acknowledged her. She was the first one in the square. And okay, she great. Got so ignored. Okay, great. So um, what you're doing with for me now is that you are uh, assuming some of the authority to get the right person identified. So Leslie, can you get inside of the square? Great. Now, Leslie, there's a question in here that um, is at the end of those uh, objects, and it's the number of people that are currently in Second Life right now. Can you go walk down those, um, nah, can you? <laughs> now, I, I asked her to walk down the stepping stones, and she hasn't done it yet, so being the kind of professor that I am, I'm not going to be happy until I get what I want. So, there she goes, one, and then she comes back. So what I've now been able to do is control the group, control the selection of who gets to participate in the activity, 
and I get to manage the individual by observing their behavior and the rest of you now socially have understood what the rules are as well. Can you come out now and then I'll ask the next person to go in. The purple avatar, um, the purple robot, can you be the next person to go in? And go ahead and find out the answer at the end of the walkway. Notice I didn't have to correct this person at all. We have, I've used um, objects, interactive objects within the space that allow the person to follow the rules. And now come on back. And I'm gonna have one more person go down as soon as that person comes back. And then I'm going to do some memory management in the environment as well. So free, free we, I want you to be the next person to go in. And notice if you alt click on free we, then you will turn your perspective into her perspective. And notice that um, another technique in this environment is to use silence in between your requests. It's not something to be afraid of. Okay, Free Week, can you come on back? And then can I have the three people who went down the walkway to stand by the giraffe-looking barrel? And I'm going to now use the concept of a game and I'm going to say who is the first one of you that can tell me how many people are in world right now by what you saw down at the end of that walk, rock, walkway. So Free We just earned herself 500 Linden and I'm paying her now because she was the first one to participate in the competition. So now I have introduced the idea of gaming without belaboring everybody's um, mind here about thinking about what gamification is. Again, we're using social presence, the ability to see what other people are doing in the environment and to acknowledge that they're doing it. Now I bet that when we go to the next exercise, that the three of you are going to keep your eye on Free We because it looks like she could manage memory in here and speed of answering questions faster than anybody else. She set up a hierarchy, a set of reputation and status to suggest that she's the person to keep your eye on. So let's walk over now to uh, number four or fly over to number four. And this is an orange activity, and this is going to require you to even be more on top of your game. Now, notice that the majority of you are standing outside of the square, because that was my rule. Stand outside of the square until you're invited in. And again, look at <clears throat> the power of using social convention to get what you're looking for. Now, this is going to be a chaotic activity, but these things that you, you can move them just by simply putting your cursor over them and um, the cursor changes to a hand and then you can move the block left and right. If you hold your control key down, you can move it up in the air. Here's the challenge, and you can either work together or work individually. Who is the first one of you that can stack up using only the technique that I've shown you, which is cursor over the object, wait for the hand to appear, and um, move the object on top of the other object by holding down the control key and moving the objects on top of each other. Who is the first person? Go all in now and see if you can stack that set of blocks up like the stack that I'm going over to and standing in front of and hopefully can sit on top of. So who is the first person <clears throat> using only the technique that I gave you?
Now, Free We has said that they're not moving for her. Yet we see some blocks moving. So how are you going to solve that problem? Using social presence, how are you going to solve that problem? Some of them move and others don't. So you're going to have to find the ones that move. And look at people's behavior. Some people stayed out of the circle or out of the square, indicating that they're apprehensive. I would call these people explorers. They like to watch. Okay? There's some people that are throwing themselves into the activity. I would probably call them <laughs> achievers. This is using Richard Bartle's classification of gamer types. I see some people chatting in world. Those are the socializers, the people that want to be recognized for what they're thinking and saying. And then, of course, to follow Bartle's last um, comment, there are killers who are going to destroy this place unless uh, they can make it work. So you should end up seeing some destruction here pretty soon if we have killer types within the environment. I think now I'm this standing is... out here because I'm so, my screen's so small I can hardly see what's going on. I see. Can you go stand in the square? And then I uh, now yeah, know... Yeah. Now I know that you're observing from the inside and I've taken care of you and I don't feel like you're apprehensive. The um, other thing is that the directions that you're giving are all in voice. So if I get distracted and I'm trying to do something else that I miss the directions. So how would you get the answer to the instruction? Uh, normally, I would type it in chat or hope that you would type something in chat. I love I don't it, know Helena. If you're looking at chat. Oh, yes, I am. Helena said I'd just ask in chat. It's a social convention to ask a question and use the chat to do it. So that's really all that needs to be done is use your social group, recognize they're available to you and that they are a resource to you. Now, I, this exercise is designed to be impossible to achieve so that it starts to solicit um, the questioning and answering that's required in social groups or the collaboration that's required in social groups. I wanted to tonight, instead of talk to you in PowerPoint slides and make you look at theory, I wanted you to engage in several kinds of activities to look at the different types of presence and the techniques that we use to engage people in interactive environments. We used body movement. We used um, sorting by asking people to sort into separate groups. Um, we used a fashion show to put emphasis on making you the center of attention and experiencing self-presence. And then we used a complicated um, activity requiring you to put blocks on top of each other to use some of the social conventions required in the environment. So my original question to you, now that I'm exactly at six o'clock, is are you here? Can you answer that question in chat? Are you here? And here's the other hard question. Do others know that you are here? Do others know that you are here? Yes. Excellent. That's what I wanted to achieve tonight without slides. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rand. That was awesome. Thank you all for coming.
if you would like a copy of the note card giving uh, Rand's bio, <laughs> Agile Bill, that's good. Yes. <laughs> sure, Bill, but you're going to have to make them yourself. Oh, well answered. Yeah, it's evil. <laughs> <laughs> you can have all the slides you want. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. This is um, this has been the ISD Virtual Environment Networks um, focus series. I don't know who will be doing the focus next month, but next week we are going to have a machinima pres presentation in the AvaCon grid. So we'll put more information out about that.